the direct tax code proposes to streamline the corporate income tax rates from 33% to 25%. Uh, looking at the reduction, it seems that the ta tax rate is going to come down, but it may not be so because uh, the effective tax rate in today's context is between 20 to 25%, so which is what the companies are paying anyway. So it's not a real benefit to the uh, companies because once you have removed uh, several of these deductions, the uh, effective tax rate and what the tax rate government is proposing would more or less be the same. When you look at the uh, kind of uh, deductions that were offered initially, I think now they are trying to streamline most of these deductions. And uh, I believe some of these deductions are moving away from the income based deductions to an asset based deductions. So that would be a major change that is happening in the tax code. Uh, some good aspects for companies, especially the loss making ones, uh, the set off and carry forward of losses would now not have a limit and they can be carry forward forever when the company makes a profit and so on. Uh, rationalization of depreciation rates, it sometimes if you see the limits to which uh, the taxpayers go, you know call, calling uh, plant and machinery as building or calling um, you know, uh, something else as something else just to get higher rates of depreciation. So the streamlining of depreciation has become a hallmark of the tax code. So you will not find too many, uh, too many classifications of assets. Uh, so the asset classification has been streamlined and so are the rates. So you can have a building and plant and machinery both at 15%. So to that extent all these uh, implementation as well as interpretation would go away. A mat has been existence in India, one form of the other, for last several years. Uh, initially, it came as a limitation in the deduction of uh, the exam deduction of various benefits. Subsequently, it changed to the income-based uh, mat and so on. World over, if you see, mat is there in all countries, and if you look at US, etc., you have mat which is based on incomes, and a few Latin American countries, the mat is based on assets. A uh, substantial change that has happened because of the direct tax code is MAT is now moving from income base to the asset base. I predominantly see two or three issues in this. One such being uh, MAT for companies that are losses, companies that are having long gestation periods, huge investments in fixed assets and they are also in loss. So for such companies, uh, MAT may become a hardship. Probably the minister should look into how this can be implemented for such you know, exempted uh, companies or companies that are taking long gestation periods. The second issue in MAT would be the valuation of assets. Looking at the accounting background and looking at the movement of moving towards IFRS, how are we going to value the assets and how are they going to be presented in the balance sheet? and how we are going to compute MAT. So this could get into a kind of a, a tricky situation, especially you may have certain assets you know, which are uh, valued at fair value, where there is no real benefit to the company, but you have to follow the accounting standards. And so also you would find that, uh, you know, the depreciation issues and how you present the assets to the investors that could be an issue, especially when you are now looking at it from the tax angle. Uh, on the good side of it, I would say MAT is good in terms of assets because uh, it will improve a company's ROI. You will not have any wasteful assets, so companies will try and use the you know the maximum out of the assets. And even in terms of infrastructure companies and companies that take long gestation period for starting up, probably they will try and reduce the time taken to start the project so that you know they are not affected by MAT and they start moving to a faster regime for paying tax on. Office. New provision on GAR is a bit tricky. Uh, it gives a lot of powers to the commissioner to set aside uh, transactions, look at asset and liability valuation, and uh, it gives great power to the commissioner. Now this has got both plus and minus points. Plus points would be, you know, uh, you know, if you are going out of the way to structure a deal to avoid tax or evade tax, you can set aside. 
but at the same time it gives lot of powers to this uh, commissioner who will look at uh, every transaction uh, with a microscope and in some sense it it is quite uncomfortable to the taxpayer because um, you know you, it lacks trust the taxpayer but in, anyways i only hope the commissioner and, and the group will use this provision very judiciously that the uh, you know the genuine taxpayers are not